it's, it sounds so, so good. What's going on guys? It's Jay. If you're new to the channel, I post car content mainly around my modified Audi S3, which I have here. This is a 2020 Audi S3 8V and I am currently tuned stage two with integrated engineering. I have some other videos going over the mods. If you guys are interested in that, I can link them below. But just a quick recap for anybody who doesn't know, stage two essentially just means that you have an intake, a downpipe, and a tune. Um, usually it's gonna be both the ECU and TCU tune to allow you to run a little more torque. But the topic of this video is actually going to be whether or not stage two is worth it on this car over stage one. So I have been stage two for about eight or nine months now. I love it. I completely love it, don't get me wrong, but there are some things that I wanna cover here. We're gonna talk about performance numbers and just what it's like to drive um, the car stock versus stage one, and then if the benefit of stage two is actually worth the additional cost. So I'm gonna hop in. I'm just gonna take a quick drive and talk through this with you guys. So here we are back in the very comfortable uh, interior of the 8V. I do have the um, diamond stitch seats. This is part of the SS package. I believe it stands for Super Sport. Not really sure, honestly. We will talk first about the car stock. If you are thinking about going stage one and you're currently stock, if you've considered all the variables, and I have a video actually talking about things you need to consider before you tune, and I'll also I'll also link that video below. But if you are, you know, if you're sure that you want to tune the car, and you're thinking about going stage one, 100% I say do it. It's amazing, and you will not regret it. So looking at the numbers, um, stock this car. I think is advertised around 290 horsepower and around 300 foot pound torque and the stage so again i'm going to talk about um integrated engineering when i'm talking about tuning here that's just because that's the company that i went with and a lot of companies for this platform are going to be comparable in terms of numbers so just keep that in mind they're not going to vary like a huge amount but I am going to be talking about integrated engineering. So that's just a, a, a forewarning here. So looking at stock, we are at 290 horsepower, 300 foot pound torque. And going from stock to stage one, um, on the pre facelift, so that's the 2015 to 2018 models, that's going to get you around 360 horsepower and 377 foot pound torque. And that jump is honestly ridiculous. So I have a video where I kind of review the driving experience of stage one shortly after I tuned. And it really is like a, a completely different car. So you'll hear people say that the tune like woke the car up. And I would say that that's a very accurate uh, description because the car just has so much torque. And the thing about this car too is that the torque is, is available pretty quickly. So when you're in sport mode and you get on it, you really kind of get pushed back into your seat almost immediately. And uh, I think that's one of the things that makes this car such an amazing daily driver as well, versus maybe some other higher powered cars where you don't really get to use the power when you're driving around town. But stage one, I was extremely happy with. And if you are not familiar with what stage one means, it's basically, um, you could just do the tune, which is the ECU tune, but uh, it's also recommended that you get the TCU tune because that's gonna allow you to run the higher torque um, mapping, and that's gonna get you the 377 foot pound torque. But um, yeah, usually you will wanna run in a cold air, like a, an aftermarket intake. I have integrated engineering's. I went with their parts for all of my stuff just because I, I think their parts are really high quality i like their branding and uh it just felt nice to have you know one kind of vendor for all of my mods but stage one totally amazing right and i was on stage one for about a week before i got the downpipe put in and went stage two and 
if we take a look at the numbers here, oh no, there's construction. Uh, let's see if I can get over. So I was stage one for about a week before I went stage two. And again, stage two is a downpipe. So if you're stage one, you most likely already have the intake and you have the stage one tunes. So that meant I was getting a downpipe and I was also getting the upgraded stage two uh, ECU tune. So because I have a facelift model, which is the 2019 to 2021 model years for the S3, Stage one, or sorry, stage two actually puts me at 425 horsepower and 460 foot-pound torque. And these are IE's numbers. And if you have the pre-facelift model, um, you're gonna be around 400 horsepower, 426 torque. And these are on 91 as well. Um, I'm using 91 just because that's the tune that I use. And it's easier to get 91 around town for me. like. Not all gas stations carry 93, and I'm assuming most people are probably gonna be going with 91 octane. So we're talking about 91 when we talk about these numbers. But going from the stage one to stage two tune, um, you know, there, there was a difference in power and it wasn't obviously as drastic as going from stock to stage one. And I really notice it more when I'm kind of higher in the power band. So when I'm driving on the highway and uh, you know I'm going like 100 kilometers an hour, it feels like I have a good amount of power up there. Um, on stage one, I still had power, but it just feels like it pulls a, a decent amount harder when you're in those higher speeds. And the other thing that I really noticed and I enjoyed about stage two, and it's one of the reasons that I wanted to go stage two, honestly, is the additional sound that this downpipe gives you. So I'm gonna say, if you, if you're gonna be somebody that just wants to have more power to drive around town and have more fun in your car, then realistically, I don't think it's worth spending the extra money going for stage two. One, because the downpipe, especially if you wanna get a good downpipe, a quality downpipe, they're not cheap. The installation, if you get it done by a shop and you're not gonna do it yourself, it's gonna cost you, I'm in Canada, so it's between 250 to $300 Canadian. Um, I think it's like quoted at around three hours for that job. So there is like a decent amount of additional cost. And then you have the cost of the tune. If you already are stage one, then it's not gonna be too much money, obviously. It's gonna be like 100 or $200. But the problem with the downpipe, if you are planning on ever getting an exhaust put on the car, so, I'm currently stock exhaust. I have a vibrant bottle resonator welded in place of where the stock one was. I previously had a res delete and it was too loud with the downpipe. But with this current setup for me, I'm really happy with now. I used to hate it, but now that I'm used to it, I've driven it for eight months, I'm actually really happy with how it sounds. It sounds just aggressive enough and it's not too over the top. So it can be quiet when I want it to, and when I'm getting on it, it sounds really sporty, really throaty. It's got a lower uh, kind of growl to it. But I, I would love to have an AWE switch path exhaust on this car, but I'm, I'm really on the fence about it because from what I've seen, if you have a downpipe on this car and you pair that with an aftermarket exhaust, it usually sounds terrible. And there's a, there's a lot of ex examples online. Um, the switch path may sound good, but the problem is I think it's probably going to be too loud for the majority of people. I'm not like a young kid anymore. I don't want to be really obnoxious around town. But if you stay stage one, right, then you have the, like, I, like you could save that money that you would be putting towards stage two. And another component that is very common with stage two is an intercooler. Um, Integrated Engineering has probably the highest quality intercooler on the market. But again, it's not cheap and it is a costly install as well. So you could take that money and you could potentially save it up and put it towards a, a nice exhaust down the line. And you'll have a really fast car that is it's more than fast enough for driving around town. Um, like realistically for me, I'm not tracking the car. I'm not trying to break zero to 60 records. Um, stage one was definitely in more than enough power. But you could stay at stage one, enjoy that extra power, and later on get an exhaust and have a really great sounding Audi S3 
with enough power to have all the fun you want. So I think like in, after all things considered, um, I'm not upset that I went with stage two just because I like to modify my cars and I do like the fact that I have kind of the most performance out of this car that you can get without going for a bigger turbo. But I think for the majority of people, staying stage one is probably the better idea. Unless you plan on, like if you wanna to go to the drag strip and you wanna you know, push your zero to 60 um, or push your quarter mile, then yeah, you're, you're gonna to wanna to do stage two because you're gonna want that extra performance, right? But if you just want a car that's really fun, um, sounds great, and you know, it's not really overly expensive to maintain, stage one I, and stage two both have been shown to be pretty reliable for the most part, then stage one is probably the answer, guys. So that's gonna be it for this video. I just wanted to do a quick, uh, a quick one, talk about my thoughts there. Um, I absolutely love this car. I've talked about it in length on this channel. And you know, the only thing that I would probably want over this is an, is an 8V RS3, but uh, not sure what's gonna happen with that yet. So if you guys enjoyed the content, please hit the like, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the video. And uh, of course, subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.